sister team, we thought, okay, maybe they'll just go for the situation where you want team later picks, you pick up Martin and sub him in yeah. the second game. If you have Crystal, then you know what you're getting. But Crystal, credit to him, he stepped up. He was still the second overall in the MVP rankings. Comes in with a new champion pool. Civ are better than Urgot, perhaps, but honestly, the Urgot comp, his Urgot play was fine. It was interesting to yeah. see the Black Cleaver into Frozen Heart 40% CDR build come out for the first time. It was just the comp, the no wave clear. It just didn't work out. Drafting errors are plenty from Snake in game two yesterday. Yeah, there were drafting errors. There was also some interesting uh, decisions made moving up the, the mid lane as well into the base. But look, we're not going to bring that one up yet again. We don't really want to um, yeah, say anything about that. But the bans are coming through, and things are very interesting over here. Of course, Snake banning away Nidalee and the Scion. Of course, you were mentioning the fact that Aluka's Scion has been banned away. Now 100% of games that World Elite have been in. And I wonder what point Sion has to get before people <laughs> finally let Aluka play it against. It's such a wonder to see. Every time it's even hovered by Aluka, the fans just get up in uproar and excitement to see his play. But Bandaway and Nidalee as well. You know, no slouch with the nerfs recently either herself. In terms of power levels, lower than it's been in quite a while, but still, respect bands are plenty coming through from Snake. Yeah, and it is going to be the Rek'Sai band away in the end. It means that Gragas is, of course, available here. And Spirit, I mean, you put a champion like Gragas into his hands, he's definitely going to make things happen. One omission from the ban list that you can see is that Urgot. Of course, Siva hasn't seen a ban so far, but it is going to be Gragas locked in. We'll see what Snake decides to do. There's a lot open here. And is Blandre just going to go back to, I'm going to pick Maokai because it's up? I think Maokai, it's a bit of an oversight not to take your first pick, but Gragas is right up there in terms of first pick priority. And it's a playmaking champion for Spirit. Finally not going to be on Sejuani. Yeah. Finally going to be on the more proactive of Cinder Hulk jungles, up there with the likes of Rek'Sai and the amount of power you can put out early. Rek'Sai banned away. Gragas, I would say, inarguably the strongest jungler available right now. Sejuani, of course, has her time, but it usually is later into the game. If you want to make things happen, you take the Gragas, and that's why I'm excited to see it snapped up by Spirit. Yeah, and Beast actually looking at the Sejuani here as well, like you mentioned, going to take a little bit longer to roll there, but Siva again here for Crystal. And there's other powerful picks. Both Azir and Cassio have come through the, the picks and bans. Use and Azir LeBlanc, everyone. will be needed if Cassio is available. Yeah, LeBlanc being available is a surprising one. That's huge. No mid lane bans after we saw a series yesterday with, what, four or five exactly, mid lane bans? yeah. Picks and bands in general have gone so many different ways. Sometimes we're just looking for what priority picks are up. There's priority picks up in the fourth round of picks these days. Yeah, there's going to be priority picks everywhere throughout this one. And Conan is thinking about picking up his Janna. Of course, plays that one a whole lot. But GA wasted no time locking away that Cassiopeia. Yeah, and the Maokai still available in the third round after being snapped up. Basically, first yeah. pick every tournament or every competitive game I've seen since MSI. Maokai has been prioritized that highly. To get both of them, the Maokai and the Gragas, it negates a lot of AoE damage. And you've got an AoE team. You've already got AoE CC and then the On the Hunt available. We were expecting maybe the Rumble, some more AoE damage to come through. But a lot of that negated with all the disruption coming through from World Elite's first three picks. Yeah, well, this is the thing. The fact that they do have all of that disruption some interesting uh, hovers to come through there. I would have liked to see both Azir and LeBlanc locked in. That might have meant that Ella could have been playing the LeBlanc support, which is always fun to see. But it looks like he, he will be defaulting back to his ever-present Janna here. Of course, Ella, a fantastic Janna player. Flandre on his NAR as well. And we've seen him with, you know, relative success on that champion. It's been a little bit hit and miss when it comes to Flandre, though. And just returning to one of your previous questions, you were asking about jungle picks and how they could build up spirit. We talked about how he played Sejuani yesterday and fell behind just because his lanes weren't strong. If you look at Snake's side, Na versus Maokai is a winning lane matchup for Na. Of course, not a lot of kill pressure on Maokai. Maokai can yep. still get that one item power spike and be relevant. So there's points of power for Maokai, but certainly not in the lane. He's just going to eat free auto attacks and be kind of irritated by the no resource Na. Yeah. So Na should be able to control that wave. In the bottom lane, Siva. Uh, Sivir and Janna, of course, can just push in the wave and can control it as well. Wave control and Sejuani allows Sejuani to be flexible in her choices. Not going to be pigeonholed into relieving pressure off lanes. Can potentially farm up if the game so chooses it. So suddenly, you have matchups here, and if Azir is picked in, you have a skill matchup in the mid lane. There's no obvious places that Sejuani needs to camp to get ahead. So Sejuani should have that flexible option to farm up. And it might be a late game Sejuani situation, which is where you always want to get. Because the first four or five levels especially, painful times for a Sejuani. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. And 
It looks like Yu is thinking about taking the Azir into this matchup. And one thing I really want to question coming through from World Elite here is the fact that they've gone with this Nami Vein lane. And Nami Vein is a fantastic lane in its own right. Tycho's Blessing really gives Vayne the tool she needs and all that sort of good stuff. But Urgot Nautilus was available. Urgot Nautilus was available. Mystic, of course, is a noted Urgot yeah. player. Good at the champion. I guess if you go for that, you don't have as much late game damage, but you have a Cassio already for damage. Now they're pairing it with two very high single target based champions in the late game, but how do you get this Nami Vein through lane? Do you try the 2v2? And honestly, we've seen an abundance of teams try the 2v2 with Vayne. One team succeeding, I forget who yesterday, and pulling it off, but most teams really struggling to lane 2v2. And if you go for the lane swap, you're gonna be lane swapping as the blue side up the top side, so you lose dragon control yeah, as exactly. well with a, jungle, a strong ganking jungler like Graga. So red side Vayne, I can understand the lane swap, but blue side Vayne, and having and needing to lane swap, I think it's risky. Yeah, it certainly is. And look, it's an odd decision. We'll see whether Mystic has some plans for that particular pick. And of course, the combination there in the bottom lane is a big deal. But let's go through the lineup. So Luca on sort of Flandre's favorite champion there in the Maokai against Flandre's Nara. And Spirit going to be picking up the Gragas. Much more high impact early on against Beast's slow rolling Sejuani. But there's, there's CC in the lanes. There's definitely damage in the lanes as well. This is a game primed for Spirit to really justify his reputation and get lanes ahead. Honestly, he's probably gonna have to spend a lot of time in the 2v2 lane if we do see true v2, true v2, true 2v2 action, yep. just to make up for the fact that Vayne Nami, not the strongest in the early levels. Once Nami gets a few levels though, gets the sustain higher, and there's a bit of kill pressure around level six, there can potentially be a big snowball, even with Siva and all her mobility. Her mobility, much like Vayne's, is on the attack. It's the fleet of foot. Precisely. It's, it's popping the ultimate. Once the ultimate's down, Vayne with Blade of the Ruin King has incredible kill pressure on a Siva. So there is potential to snowball that lane. And if Siva only becomes relevant in throwing out some boomerangs to clear minions and back away, we get a free farm Vayne. It's looking like good late game times for World Elite. Yeah, that's precisely right. And we'll see whether Conan can roam around the map as well. I mean, you get to a stage where Vayne has that Blade of the Ruin King. You want to be split pushing. It does alleviate some pressure from Conan. He can get deep vision down. He can roam around with Spirit, really make things happen on this map. Yeah, that's that's always a possibility. On the Janna though, sorry, on the, um, he's on the Nautilus, I believe. I, I believe he's on um, Nami. On the Nami, sorry. Yeah, it's Nami versus J Janna in terms of the support matchup, so not high impact in terms well, of CC. But still gonna be able to roam around and do as much work as possible. And we'll see whether he can as we hop onto the Rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, as we hop onto the rift for Snake versus World Elite. Game one here, as Conan there was just hanging around in the brush. Of course, he is on Nami. There we are. We nailed it. Beast and Flandre waiting for the blue buff to spawn as well. No deep vision to come through for either side. Just going to be wards up the river, just making sure no one crosses over to the other side. It looks like Snake did get some vintage. They have spotted the fact that Mystic and Conan are going to be landing in the bottom lane. Already seen the lane top initiated, though. So lane top initiated by Snake. Maybe that was just a double bluff that was pulled off. Ella getting a lot of damage onto Spirit. So it's going to be a risky early clear for Spirit. Yeah, Ella actually going to get body slammed here by Spirit as well, who just drinks a whole bunch as well. And now that he's level two, really able to answer back that aggression. Aluka going to start off this blue buff as well. And Ella's not giving up. I mean, look, Ella doesn't need to be in lane. The freeze has been enacted by Sivir in top, so might as well try and get a cheeky steal. We've seen early <laughs> level twos from the likes of Mako, you'll remember, yeah. on support Vega. A little bit harder when you're Jana and you only have auto attacks to show for it, but still, harassing getting timers for Snake. Yeah, and Aluka and Spirit, a lot lower than they would have otherwise been here as well, as, of course, with that Eye of the Storm, you do a fair bit of damage with your auto attacks. Beast able to clear out this one. Ella, okay. Going to get out of there. We're going to be fine. Beast, going to take a little while to clear out that Raptor camp there as well, as GA, of course, going to be pushing in relatively hard. It's hilarious that, of course, Beast is still Sejuani, so it looks like he's been auto-attacked by a Janna the whole laning phase. But no, that's just how <laughs> slow, low you yeah. fall in the jungle as a Sejuani. I'm sad that we missed the first minute, minute and a half, because I'm not really sure how World Elite, with a vain Nami lane, managed to get both a lane swap and stay on the bottom side of the map to actually have dragon control in this vertical jungling situation. Yeah, it looks a bit ridiculous. Maybe Snake, they have a, Could have been a slight bluff, plan for it. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, of 
course, Snake, without any vision of a lane swap, may have just predicted that something may have happened. Nice little sapling from Maluka is going to spot the fact that he does not want to be in this lane. Toluca, even though he's got a Teleport Smite champion, still got a very good jungle follow, so he'll be just fine. The pause comes through, so we can kind of take stock of what's happened. Honestly, World Elite have won a lot of ways in the early game. Maybe yeah. not quite in the health bar on Gragas, who got really uh, poked out by Ella, but apart from that, getting a lane swap but not losing Dragon Control is such a bonus. And they've got jungle Gragas, so once he's shot, picked up his jungle item, Gragas has excellent early Dragon Control because he can pop that Drunken Rage. It gives him the extra damage to those neutrals. I believe the cap was increased to 400. Bit of sustain coming through from the happy hour. Can, of course, body slam over the back of the pit on this blue side very safely, so can do it largely unseen. Can't really solo it. Maybe around level 3, 4 will be able to, but fall low. But basically, every early metric is working good for Waterloo. And honestly, when you pick Nami Vayne, and things work out this well, it's better than expected for Waterloo. Yeah, and when it's about sort of three to four minutes into the game here as well, is, is this sort of, is it, are they out of the woods just yet? Because of course the counter lane swap could come back through here for Snake if they are able to actually fast push down this top lane out of turret, might get a little bit of extra gold and then make the lives of Waterloo bad. I think regardless of what's, how this was caused, I think you kind of have to follow that logic, as you mentioned, Atlas, and go for the fast, which I think you have to understand that the best way is to force Vayne into a long lane or force Maokai into a long lane and take advantage of the suboptimal situation that you found yourself yeah. in. Go for the fast push. Vayne doesn't have as many fast push options as Sivajana, of course, and try and take back the 2v2. At least pick up something and then swap back. You don't want to just swap back and waste time and waste minion control and creeps that you miss when you're looking to swap between hands. You want to take that turret quickly, counter swap before even the first dragon is picked up. I think that's probably too optimistic. It looks like dragon's a realistic objective four to six minutes into this game, yeah. but we've seen stranger things. We've seen teams with dragon control still not pick up their first dragon until eight, nine minutes into the game. So honestly, Snake, at this present point in the situation they're in, push in that top wave, try and take that turret fast, and then counter swap to start to get that dragon control back. Yeah, and so we'll see whether it is World Elite getting away with taking that dragon very, very early on without the top lane being taken yet, or whether it is going to be Snake able to take that top turret before the dragon even goes down, because it's good to sort of look at what can go right for these teams, and we can see exactly what happens as we hop back into the game and see who's actually going to be able to fit those win conditions, because of course, as these game, as this game moves forward, I mean, You've got the likes of Vayne and, of course, a Cassiopeia. There's a whole lot of damage coming out of World Lead in the late game. It's a very single target, and, of course, if one of those targets is True. bursted down but during a Sejuani Glacial Prison cooldown, then perhaps it'll come undone. But, yes, absolutely, there is definitely team fight potential in the late game coming through from World Elite. I just want to go through a bit of a thought exercise while we look at the great fans. Now we're going to load back into game, but just to consider a point, you might wonder, okay, Let's assume, because we missed the first minute and a half, let's assume yeah. the snake just initiated a lane swap. You might think, okay, but why are you lane swapping when you could have had this uh, Sivajana versus a Vayne Nami matchup that does on paper sound very positive. World Elite working on their win condition, four minute dragon will be very early. But one reason why they might do that, Atlas, is to hide Sejuani. We've already seen Sejuani's get yeah. behind. When you initiate a 2v1 with a jungle follow, it's much harder for a carry jungle-like spirit to get in the face of the Sejuani, steal away her camps, or just basically harass her out of the jungle early. It's the strategy that LGD used prominently to hide TBQ on his Cinder Hulk jungler, so perhaps it was just a chase that Snake wanted to hide that jungler and just try and get Bruce, Beast through those awkward early levels as Sejuani. Yeah, and speaking of an awkward time here, World Elite may actually find themselves in trouble, but Ella's just going to get caught out. Beautiful Aqua Prison. First Blood is going to go to Spirit of Snake, try and hide underneath this turret, and they just didn't quite get there in time. And they had two choices of their victim, smartly flanging with the instant flash towards turret. Ella not so lucky, eats the bubble. Dragon and First Blood, things going great for World Elite. Yeah, World Elite able to pick up that kill, and it's... Amazing that they managed to get there exactly at the right time as well. They knew exactly what Snake was going to do and just destroyed that option for them as Beast is going to try and push this one out. Permafrost doing some work there to try and do some AoE damage to these minions as Flandre is going to continue trying to get some farm. Of course, 14 to 3. Things going okay for Flandre, but Tumble's going to get Mystic out of trouble and Aluka now able to get into this lane and try and get some work done. Yeah, Aluka definitely on. 
A standard tank, not quite the Scion, still unavailable for a Luka. No. We're going to be happily farming from range. That's the unique thing about Maokai, is that his ranged farming for a melee champion is just ridiculous. You don't even really think of him as a melee champion, because the only time he starts auto-attacking is either once he's used the Twisted Advance and using that high base damage to get in your face, or just for sustain, honestly, with the passive. Yeah. And Art Spirit there with an interesting parade of friends as the minions follow him out of that mid lane. Have you noticed that minions follow you a really long way? Yeah! I'm starting to feel like I have more friends on Summoner's Rift. I had a minion follow me to the blue buff from bottom lane. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know that the enemy team had vision. It was the most effective ward they could have ever <laughs> asked for. That's <laughs> uh, what happens, what people have to do. They have to convince their minions to follow Papa Smithy around in order to know where he's going to be in these games. Blandre. Not going to get bubbled there as Conan throws out an optimistic one, as now Mystic trying to do what he can, picking up the minions underneath this turret. Ranger's Trailblazer are actually used by base just for a bit of AoE pushing potential. They really want this lane to reset. It looks like they could continue the jungle follow. I imagine the freeze would have happened whatever the case was once Beast left the lane, but just trying to put themselves in as optimal position as possible. And we talked about the fast push. It's definitely been on. It's not a five-minute turret, but with the reinforcements, that's a lot of chip damage for six minutes into the game. Yeah, precisely. And Crystal able to use that Eye of the Storm Shield as well, really buff up those auto attacks. So this tower falling very, very low, but of course First Dragon has already gone over the way of World Elite. And it might be the second one that Snake might be opting into contesting. Because, of course, not a whole lot they could do without the man advantage there in that lane. We haven't spent a lot of time talking about mid lanes. Definitely a skill matchup. We saw it three times in a row during the LCK finals uh, between Kuro and Easyhoon in that particular match, SKT versus G. Kuro, uh, Easyhoon was able to get on the winning side of both, but it's a true skill matchup. And in this case, I feel like the slight advantages towards Cassiopeia, you can get those really strong damage trades and... and as the as the, you only really have wave control and defensive options, 12 CS advantage is probably what we expect at this point for Gia on the Cassiopeia side of things. Yeah, you've been doing a respectable job, but you're exactly right. Of course, Gia, he's only got that tier as well, so Fiendish Codex is in the back pocket of you, so more combat stats available for the Azir, but Gia is still able to put on the pressure, so definitely a commendable performance here for the World Elite middle lane. It's, again, it's, it's a fairly even matchup with the early advantage towards Cassiopeia and the late game team value advantage towards Azir, just because Cassio oh, is that those, how it's supposed to those work? weird laning, th those weird late game situations where you just uh, positioning the use of the ultimate, the petrifying gaze, in this case might actually be quite reliable. Obviously, a fairly unreliable ultimate just because it depends on the way the enemy's facing. But when you're fighting next to a vein, if both these hyper carries fight together and you have to come onto the Cassiopeia and vein, and there's for whatever reason the uh, Beast's ultimate is down, or they have Banshee's Veil, QSS, respectively. In that situation, if you know the enemies are diving a vein, Petrifying Gaze becomes a very strong AoE deterrent to stop the dive onto the Hyper Carry Vein. Yeah, so on paper, things definitely looking okay. We'll see how it works out in practice here as Snake moves forward here on the bottom side of the map. Top lane out of turret, as we saw before, did recently fall down, but only 200 gold is the lead here for Snake. Very small lead. Big lead between Nara and Maokai, but Maokai's just been doing the team thing. They picked up dragons, yeah. so we can always talk about that intangible difference between the first dragon and picking up a bit of farm, but that's definitely been the result. Finally, Spirit feeling spry enough to get into the enemy jungle now that standard lanes have emerged. Beast's going to spot him with a ward. Yeah, Beast actually staying invisible here as well as Spirit does notice the fact that he's got a couple of friends coming down here. Cassio's reacting fastest, though. Yeah, there's the flash into the body slam there as well. Flandre going down solo, exploded by that vengeful Maelstrom. And World Elite pick up their second kill. That's a lot of base damage. Remember, no combat stats barring the small amount of ability power completed between those two champions. But they basically popped a Nar. Yeah, and that was just perfect timing there with a the mini Nar there as well as Crystal is going to get... Oh my goodness, that spell shield was wonderful as the bubble came through. But final hour has been popped. Crystal's held onto his ultimate for quite some time as a tumble comes through. After that condemn, I'm not even sure how that managed to actually get the stun, but Mystic winning the trade here. That was really nice vein mechanics to get the stun, as you mentioned. I didn't expect it at all. He actually held onto the condemn until he knew that the uh, uh, spell shield has been used. You can see the mechanics of this lane. Conan needs to hit the bubble to try and draw out the... 
Oh, oh my goodness, there's another Condemn into the wall. Nice Monsoon to get Mystic out of the way there as the Boomerang comes over the top. Heal's been used, but Ignite's ticking onto Crystal. Flandre, there's the Boomerang. A second one comes down, and Crystal is going to be able to pick up that kill, but Flandre's not done. The Hyper Prox now trying to be used up. Mystic makes his way under the turret, and he is going to be okay, but Snake... Baiting quite nicely. Yeah, Maokai actually had good wards to teleport to, but chose not to. Had a big wave finally pushed towards him, finally trying to equalize the massive CS disadvantage. Only five CS behind now. So it's chosen the selfish route. They only lose one. Mystic didn't die. So maybe Vindicated there for Aluka. Yeah, just a little bit. He's able to get some work done towards that top side, and the gold lead has not changed one iota in that situation, of course with Flandre falling down on the top side. So this game, very, very close here. World Elite more than happy just because they're up the Dragon. The Dragon has now respawned as well. They're one Dragon ahead. And if they can keep a shutout on that objective, then 200 gold means nothing. This is really exciting to watch the dueling and bottom lane. Now that Vayne's gotten going, probably has Blade of the Ruin King on the next back. You have this situation where Conan needs to hit the bubble to try and draw out the spell shield. Then you finally have the ability to get the condemns. There's lots of skill shots, a lot of high octane action happening yeah. in the bottom lane. You wonder sometimes why you don't see a lot of Nami and Solo queue. Is that the bubble is a slow moving skill shot, super powerful, but you need to hit it to really be relevant as a support. Yeah, and of course, if Crystal doesn't manage to Spell Shield a Condemn if that's used first, that's the easiest bubble of Conan's life. Absolutely. So it's just a lot happening in the 2v2. It's always the case with Vayne. Now that Blade of the Ruin King is completed, you're going to have to start respecting this Vayne if you're Crystal. Yeah, precisely. But Mystic, now that he's got it, heading back to this bottom lane, doesn't give him any sort of options as far as AoE wave clear, so Siva always going to win out on that front. But... As soon as he can just duel a Sivir away from a lane every single time, it's going to be a problem. Luca has discovered Flandre here, who's got half a Narbar built up. He really wants to fight this one if he can. Ventral Maelstrom was used just to prevent some of the damage, but Luca sitting on half mana, he's going to be A-OK. -okay. It's surprising, uh, surprisingly equal trade, despite the fact that Flandre face-checked a Maokai, who was full health. Only the only the uh, the Catalyst compared to the Merc Treads, that's the Madras is doing a lot of work, again, uh, decrease in the CC duration as well. Trades continue to go well for Flandre. Aluka has teleports. So they need to make a play around Dragon because they have that teleport advantage. And actually, Spirit may lose a pink ward there, but isn't end up isn't going to go down, which is quite strange. Of course, Snake not deciding to remove that one as well. They're going to make their way back down towards this bottom side of the map. Spirit just zoning away the Snake bottom lane as best he can. Trying to get some pressure on this next dragon that's going to be coming through. Of course, Flandre with a lot of pressure in the top side. So that is something that Mini Nara is sort of able to do. But still, it's not a lot of options here for Wadley. They're kind of caught between two bad options. They have that global teleport, so you might think, okay, Maokai teleports in, take the free dragon. They kind of need to engineer a situation where Maokai can threaten the teleport, but not actually use it. Because if he teleports, that's going to be an inner turret down from the yeah. Nar. Now already has double Dorans and a long soul. We're talking about what? I believe that's 26 extra AD. Already a very potent turret taker. Maybe that's the situation they're engineering right now. They do not want Aluka to teleport, or they will lose a massive objective. Yeah, Gio making his way around here, but only puts down a little bit of poison. Second Dragon going to go over to World Elite very easily here. Snake conceding that one completely. Some of these concessions by Snake just are surprising to me. The lane yeah. swap that they managed to get on the blue side, so getting lane swapped on a surprising concession to World Elite. Now taking a second Dragon when they were in such a good place strategically, not having the teleport, but having the minions so far pushed up that inner turret damage was a possibility. Again, two surprising things about Snake. Plenty of surprises in yesterday's uh, series as well. But yeah. Snake, I feel like they're making some strategic mistakes when they've actually got a very powerful early game comp. Yeah, I find it very strange that Snake would ever opt out of fighting as well. Because this is Snake that we know and love. I mean, this team loves just to do battle at all times. I feel like they listened to a lot of the criticisms that, okay, we can move away from the team fight only approach. It looked good in game one yesterday. Then they went full team fight in game two and lost that game. They've gone back to a more rotational based comp, but they're not taking those early advantage. In fact, they're conceding. Uh, yeah. They're conceding dragons, especially, not turrets just yet, but dragons over to World Elite that honestly, they don't need to. Yeah, and Beast hasn't had an opportunity to use that ultimate once so far this game. We've seen the Sejuani sort of be a little bit of a non-factor. Has gone back, picked up the Cinder Hulk, does have another Ruby Crystal there as well as Tornadoes and Boomerangs heading towards the bottom side of the map, but Mystic not going to find any of them, and Conan 
He's going to take a bit of a ride into the sky for a moment, but he's going to be A-OK. -okay. And honestly, the big benefactor of all their lane swapping and machinations has been Beast. It has been the Sejuani, yeah. who's basically been able to farm happily to level 8, pick up the Cinderho, work on those next items. We're going to be looking for a big carry performance by Beast in teamfights in the mid to late game. Just look at some of Clear Love's games on Sejuani last season to see what a free farm Sejuani can do in the late game. It's going to be on him to lock down Jie, Mystic, both of them, or at least delete one of them. Otherwise, it doesn't justify giving Vayne effectively free farm. Vayne the big winner for World Elite, Beast the big winner for Snake. Yeah, and it seems to me like Snake sort of don't even really mind about what Mystic is going to be doing on this Vayne. Crystal more than happy just to, you know, be Sivir into the matchup. On the Hunt has been popped, but Crystal's taken so much damage already. World Elite, full health after Snake decided to take that fight. Now Conan, once again, hit the bubble, drew out the spell shield. All Crystal can do is pop the ult and back away. No good options available. Being a bit of a bubble magnet, you have to think. We don't know how much practice that Crystal has on this Sivir. Has played it competitive. I believe this is his sixth outing on the champion. Two and three, I believe, overall. Definitely wasn't something we associate with him. Much more the oh, hyper carry no. player. And the 500 range is getting punished for every trade that he takes. It's not working out so far. They were, of course, trying to bait something there for Beast to find his way into that fight, but World Elite decided that they're not going to take any fight that they don't want, and Mystic more than happy just to sit in this lane and pick up the farm that he can. And will they just concede the third dragon? I don't understand when they start turning it on to Snake. They're in a very capable position of fighting. Look at their items. They're much more offensively minded. They have the Hextrink and Merc Treads onto this Nah. Actually, a lot of items on you already with yeah. the Morellonomicon and the extra Nisla large rod, a lot of wave clear available. And, and, and Siva has the Infinity Edge. So if they choose to take a fight, in fact, if you just engage a fight and bot, you sidestep the bubble and you just get an auto attack crit into a, a ricochet crit, you have a lot of kill pressure on the very low base stat vein. But again, it's just wave clear wars and that suits World Elite. It does, but I guess in this mid lane, this is where things are going better here for Snake as Yu has formed himself a bit of a CS advantage, up by almost 20 CS at this stage of the game. GA struggling just a little bit to deal with the fact that Yu has so much flat, AD, flat AP affecting these Sand Soldiers auto attacks. Yeah, basically, when the AP comes through and the wave gear becomes that much more regular, think about the same sort of situation with, say, a Zerath. The Shurama champions, very similar yeah. in a lot of their power spikes, but 20% CDR into an initial large rod means much faster wave clear, and then Gia has to respect the Sand Soldiers, not able to walk through them as a medium to short-ranged mage, and just ends up getting passively out CS'd over time. But again, you're trading a little bit of extra CS on an Azir for just so much more CS on a Vayne than you'd expect. You'd expect Vayne to be 20 CS down on this matchup, not a couple ahead. Yeah. It was very, very different here from what we're normally seeing on the veins so far. Mystic might be in a little bit of trouble, but Conan's still waiting in the wings. Crystal is going to find his way out of that brush, just hold this minion wave away as Ella hasn't been spotted just yet, but Boomerang does go wide. Oh, they want to try and find something. Conan has been pinged out here as Beast is going to find Spirit and Conan following him up. Ella. Oh, beautiful spell shield going to stop that Condemn from coming through. Final Hour and Tumble have been used now. As Mystic is going to come around. The auto attack reset going to come oh. through, but Mystic with so much damage. Beautiful exhaust to save Crystal's life there as both teleports are going to come in. Flandre with a nice Narbar there as well, just waiting to try and get his bounce in there. But in the end, nothing going to come from it. So we'll have to be very quick to build up Rage as this dragon spawns. Of course, with the 30 seconds from the moment that you spawn into Nar to when you can next build up the Nar bar, going to be about 10 seconds before the dragon that he starts to build up the Nar Rage bar again. So this is the big dragon. It's the third dragon. The extra 5% moves people will negate a lot of what the rotational advantages that Silver has available. But there's the team fight. Yeah, Luca jumping right in on this one. Beast hasn't even used his ultimate just yet, and he's going to die. In fact, it was on cooldown. World League going to transition into taking down this blue buff. Spirit going to lock that one in, and Flandre going to get condemned against the wall as well. Mystic trying to get some damage off. Nice Emperor's Divide going to cause Chie to bounce around quite a lot in tandem with the... Howling Gale, but World Elite now with positional advantage around this dragon. Exactly. Being able to kite back to the third dragon is a massive backup win condition here for what they would not have expected. This monopolization over the early dragon against the likes 
of Sivir and Azir, but that's the third dragon in their pockets. And at 20 minutes, that's an early fifth dragon. We're looking at potentially around the 32 minute mark for such a big win condition like fifth dragon. Yeah, and there's still a whole lot of standing gold here available for World Elite as well. One turret, turret has been taken the whole game. Exactly. They don't even have a turret themselves. So standing gold and potentially fifth dragon. We're talking about 12% bonus stats super early into the game. Okay, it's not ideal. You don't have the 400 AD to get the big 12% spike, but you'll take it. Yeah, you most certainly will. I mean, don't look a gift horse in the mouth or a gift dragon or whatever the heck we're talking about here. It's you... Pushing the wave into this mid lane outer turret. Crystal going to finally finish off the outer in the bottom lane as well. Does have the Brutalizer completed, so Crystal also going towards the Ghost Blade Sivir build. Wanted to make sure that Boomerang is hurting as much as possible. Again, that's a early to mid game focus build. You're talking about yeah. six seconds of power once you pop the Yoma's Ghost Blade. Not a consistent power spike that you would have expected. Flandre's found a lot of opposition. Yeah, there are a lot of friends here in this top side of the map. Wants to use the Nar, but another beautiful bubble as Flandre's wanders oh. out of the tidal wave as well. Luca continues to tank this one up as Minina is on the run from three members here. Oh, you. That was. That was cool esque. It was definitely cool esque as the turret is going to get tanked up here as Beast finds GA there as well. A lot of consistent damage, but Crystal, Ooh. he's going to take down Mystic somehow, and GA turns it around in the mid lane. Flandre continues to be on the run here. There's the boomerang just going to stop Aluka from finding his way around, and Flandre continues to build up his Naba here at the same time. Snake is going to take down this outer turret in the mid lane. And Papa Smithy, I'm not sure what's going on. Well, a couple of kills were donated over to World Elite, but Mystic falls and two turrets fall for World Elite. Standing gold has become a bigger and bigger concern as now it's a 3,000 gold hole for World Elite. A Snake honestly out-rotated them like crazy. Yeah, picked up the outer turret in the top lane, the outer turret in the mid lane there as well. Then now going to have a whole lot more map control and leading up to the fourth dragon that World Elite really want to be taking, Snake are going to have a lot more control over this map. But Ghostblade being completed. Yu has also finished off the Rabidon's death cap as well. There are item timings that are coming through for Snake, which would have been really nice to have as soon as a dragon was spawning. But man, right now, this team is looking much stronger than they were a few minutes ago. Definitely. Just coming back to that Yuma's Ghostblade. Very early game focus, but massive power. A two-item spike that cannot really be compared by Vayne, whatever she builds. In fact, she looks like Vayne is caught between Ghostblade and perhaps a Zeal into a Phantom Dancer as his next pickup. Interesting. Has a bit of attack speed that, and already has the Berserker Greaves. So obviously we'll eventually be building into a bit more attack speed, but... It's not going to match Yoma's Ghostblade Infinity Edge already completed here for Crystal. Fourth Dragon spot, maybe that's when we'll finally see the Titanic 5v5 team fight that we've been expecting to see for the last 10 minutes or so. But the item timing's definitely earlier, so you have to wonder if you're going to get outscaled in terms of items. For example, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, Last Whisper, going to always outscale whatever damage item Crystal builds after Yoma's Ghostblade. You'd expect earlier fighting, and that's the surprise to see three dragons in the hole for World Elite. Yeah, well, precisely. Well, World Elite now focusing here towards the top side of the map. They really want to start picking up at least some structures anywhere. Spirit waiting around here as well. Snake sitting at half health. I mean, Flandre, sorry. He's not the entirety of the team. He's just Flandre, but certainly a pivotal member. But sitting at half health here as well, so not with a whole lot of Narbar and Snake... Wanted to try and get some pressure down into this mid lane. Spirit was moved away from the top side of the map. The so GA is going to be able to take the turret. There's so many wave control options for Snake in terms of they've got Sivir who can push in. Azir, at this point of power, can very much push those waves quickly. So fiercely single target a World Elite outside of a Luka and Spirit. That is, this is the result, unfortunately, is that you're often going to be multiple turrets in the hole. Make any mistake, Snake will just roll in with the on the hunt and take multiple structures. So World Elite, even though they had this scaling comp, remember we said a lot of these same things yesterday yeah. when they had a very strong scaling comp against IG and still a couple of mistakes, specifically Mystic being caught out by Rookie and the game was over. Yeah, well, Snake can certainly snowball these leads very quickly. Mystic has finished now that Ghost Blade. He's sitting on just an extra dagger, so probably just had room for it in his inventory. Really duelist build coming out from Xie. Finishes the Rylai second. Spirit goes for a steal. Yeah, Spirit. Empress Divide's going to be used there as well. He's very, very low, but he's going to survive in the end. The Dragon up in a minute, but there's the ultimate. Not going to find it. Permafrost. Also not going to get Beast the kill either. Not around the back. 
Yeah, Flandre looking to try and get something happening here. Spirit, then Nara into the wall on both Mystic and Conan as well. Final hour has been popped, but Flandre, he's getting melted in the hands of this vein as Ooh. Crystal throws the perfect boomerang. GA flashes forward a whole lot of consistent damage as well, and he's tanky as all heck on this Cassiopeia. We thought the vein was down, and that was the damage gone. Heck no, this Cassiopeia doing some work. GA went in 1v4, getting a four-man ultimate with the petrifying gaze, and literally, 1v4 from there. So much sustain coming through from the passive. The slow meant that no one could get away with the poison hitting all four members. And an effective 1v4 with just the slightest amount of help keeps Waddley in this game and gives them position on dragon number four. Yeah, it's... The build is just beautiful out of GA as well. I don't know why more Cassiopeias don't pick up Riley's early on because the item is just fantastic giving her the tankiness as well. It's not even necessarily the slow what that item gives you that no other item gives. It's the fact that you get it to build a giant spell. Exactly. 2100 health, then another four, 500 health coming through from the Rylas. It's a very tanky early game Cassiopeia. Vandre has a lot of chase potential onto Luca, but probably not kill potential with no Blade the Ruin King or potentially... Sorry, no uh, Black Cleaver or other offensive choice coming through in the build. Yeah, it doesn't quite have the frozen mallet here as far as... His offensive choice was he did pick up that Hex Drinker early on and now has the Giant Spell, possibly going towards that Randuin's Omen as his next choice. The Spirit's going to take away these Raptors as well. GA almost stole that one away from Spirit, but Snake, they've started off the Dragon. It's about half health here as well, and Sand Soldier's in position. Snake, they lock that one down on the Hunt's being used here as well. Spirit looks to try and get something, but look at Yu's damage. And Snake just snuck the dragon. Well, they had the ability to just use the on-the-hunt defensive they needed to. They had to respect Jay once he finally showed up, but they didn't have position. They cleared the wards. It was smart play coming through from Snake, but they're trying to answer it with Baron. They have a Cassiopeia, remember. There's a lot of Baron damage between Vayne and Cassio. Yeah, and already Blade of the Ruined King as well as the Silver Bolts. And this Baron is getting torn apart. Snake... No idea what was going on at all. And World Elite say, yeah, you can have the dragon. Here but we'll we go. take the Baron. And Ella and Beast getting caught out. Nice tidal wave, but it's a beautiful ultimate from Beast. As you uses the ultimate already here as Aluka trying to get in there, but he's not going to be able to. Crystal also managing to get some damage down, but it is going to be you that picks that one up. Mystic uses the Condemned to try and get the heck out of dodge. And Snake, I mean, they took the fight, but they've lost the Baron. It's a really big misplay coming through from Spirit. He actually chased onto the low health beast instead of fighting with his single target carries. And Gia and Mystic just had no target selection. The, the poison fell down. Vayne was zoned away. You need to fight with your team there if you're Spirit. And the fact that he split away just left these, this squishy backline, especially, of course, the Vayne exposed. Yeah, and I mean, as soon as Snake can take control of an area, Yu is doing so much damage on this Azir. The Rabidon's completed and is going to soon have the um, Void Staff in his back pocket as well. This is only going to get worse for World Elite dealing with these sort of area-based fights. Absolutely, and that's the, the big thing about World Elite's comp. You aggress onto it, you aggress onto the Petrifying Gaze, and Vayne just tumbling around the back. Excellent team fight comp in that situation for World Elite. When you're going aggressively, Unless you're using the explosive cast to push targets in, unless Maokai is getting a pick on a single member, it's much more awkward fighting aggressively if you're World Elite, especially if uh, in the back line uh, you can set up some sand so it doesn't really get damaged down the front line. Yeah, that's right. So we'll see whether World Elite can orchestrate the team fights that they're looking for. Of course, not too many neutral objectives for either team to go after here as Snake now trying to deal with some barrened up minions. But what Elite, they've been struggling to push this entire game, and it seems to be what a lot of these vain lineups tend to run into as far as the problems that the team comps face. So you wonder, why not the split push? Vayne, a wonderful split pusher. The purple build was coined, and the purple build is completed in this case with a seal on top. Vayne can easily outduel Siva in a sideway push, even with the item times. Of course, random double infinity edge crit, anything can change. True. But so many tools in the kit for Vayne to outplay a Siva. They should be happy to put Mystic in a sideway, but they don't have minion, uh, wait, sorry, ward control on the blue side of the Snake's jungle, so they're not really able to commit to the split push. And then you get this awkward situation where, with plentiful wave clear, you're never going to get more than an outer turret with Vayne sieging. Yeah, with the fact that Vayne has such low range here as well, not going to get much free time with a turret, even if any of your minions do survive. And because the defensive wards are so strong, they're being met every time they go for these clears. Usually, if you're the team 
aggressively cutting between mid and bottom lane, you have a shorter route, so you should expect them to get should expect to get there faster. But if you're predictable, this is the situation. You're able to anchor up, defend the structure, and Water Elite doing their best to get another turret, but this Baron buff, it's not crashing down objectives for them. Yeah, and Baron buff generally, I mean, you're talking about if you pick it up and grab two turrets, that's really good use of the Baron, but so far, World Elite have not really been able to pick up much at all. I mean, I believe they may have got the outer turret in the mid lane, but I mean, that is about all they can hang their hat up on. And they do have the gold lead. So 3,000 gold now in the lead here for this World Elite lineup, but it's looking difficult here for them because Snake's sort of win condition in a team fight is a little bit more obvious than what it is for World Elite. It's all about the double snap. If you can get that Glacial Prison onto Jir and Mystic, the first time, obviously, you're probably only going to get the cleanse, but the second time, a lot of kill pressure coming through. Water Elite's set up a very slow push in the top lane, but it's not really going to help out. Maokai's just going to go equalize that wave now anyway. They didn't have the minion waves or the aggressive ward clearing to be able to cut between mid lane and bottom lane, and the result, no turrets. Yeah, unable to find anything, and the Baron buff now going to wear off as Crystal is going to meet Aluka there on the top side of the map. Actually decides that he wants to back off as Flandre does have teleport available, so if anything is going to happen here, Flandre can answer. Dragon up in another minute and a half. But with the fact that Snake managed to pick up the last one, they are going to have those 6% stats for themselves as well. And as soon as you can shut another team out of every single Dragon, it's fantastic news. But now things are a little bit more even here, only missing out on, you know, some pushing power and maybe some movement speed. Absolutely, and that's why the first dragon giving you the 6% stats is such a crucial factor about dragons, that even though there's snowball, even though the fifth and the first dragons are so strong, the first being relevant gives you that catch-up mechanic. They have yeah. those damage statistics coming through. It helps them opt into a fight for what would be the fourth dragon for Mystic and World Elite. World Elite just don't have the defensive wards on this blue side. It's hurt them a couple of times, first with that rotation and now with dragon control. They need to make Snake's movements around their blue side jungle more predictable to get this safe dragon, because they need to know especially where Beast is at all times when they initiate a fight. But, I mean, if we're talking about anything that World Elite can hang their hat on, GA has hit a fantastic item spike here. It does have the Seraph's Embrace for the shield, but the Riley's and the Leandri's Torment for so much extra slow and damage here against these high health targets. He's an equal opportunity murderer. He's happy to take yeah. on anyone in a fight, even happy gonna burn down Sejuani with the big health stack. Yeah, Beast actually might be taken down here as the tidal wave comes through. Nice condemn over there as well as Beast tries to find a target that he needs to fight here. Nice work of the lock of the Iron Solarian Beast. Able to flash away here as well. Nice Nara to the wall as Spirit and Aluka getting locked down. Beautiful bubble under Crystal though as Aluka flashes away, but you picks up the kill. And I don't know how, but that was the first one in this ex exchange. And how is Beast still alive? Yeah, but Spirit still high health. Beast very low health. Will they look to fight 4v5? They still have a lot of power in this comp, but it looks like Snake with the numbers advantage should be able to pick up the dragon. Yeah, Spirit is going to be able to make this a 50-50 though, but Beast does pick that one up with the Smite and Snake. They're just going to move out of here. I mean, it's just so awkward fighting in this terrain. They want a situation where uh, Snake are coming into them so they can take advantage of the synergy defensively between Jia and Mystic, but offensively, Spirit and Aluka getting poked out by the Sand Soldiers, poked out by all the chip and AoE damage coming through from Crystal. They're trying to rotate and take a turret. It was already very, very low. But this dragon, it could have already been a 32-minute fifth dragon like we spoke about. Two have been stolen away effectively by Snake. Yeah, so Snake keeping themselves in this game, of course, still at a gold deficit now. But, of course, being able to pick up these dragons is a massive deal for these guys. And look, we'll see whether they can actually change this one around because Baron's up in another nine seconds. And if World Elite get another one, I have to think that they will be able to use that to push through. Of course, we've seen already that their wave control is great. Being able to pick up that inner turret in the bottom lane without really much to do with it at all. So Mystic, now the red buff. The we'll trinkets, see they go back. Trinkets are kind of an issue for World Elite. They need more sweepers to be able to clear out Dragon, uh, Baron Vision especially. They've been slow and second to react to both Dragon and Baron Vision in the last 10 minutes. Very... Uh, questionably, Aluka still has a warding totem, not an upgraded warding totem like yeah. uh, a crystal is opted into. Just a regular warding totem doesn't really offer them anything in this particular situation with the sightstone, the ruby sightstone, in fact, being completed by uh, Nami. 
in this particular situation. I think you need to go either for the upgraded yellow trinket and get more wards on the map around this Baron, or just help with the sweepers to try and get exclusive vision. And so Flandre picked up the Randu and Zomen, but Luca, he's got, sort of got his big items now in his back pocket. The Frozen Heart, the Righteous Glory, and the Spirit of Getting ready at this stage, and World Elite now looking to try and create some control around this Baron and World Elite. They don't find the bubble, but Crystal gets knocked into the air. It's a big team fight ultimate down. Conan probably too trigger happy on the tidal wave. Don't have that cooldown available in a fight to just try and disrupt any of the engage that will linearly be coming in from the likes of Beast. Fondo trying to spit the team. These team fights have been so awkward for World Elite. Yeah, World Elite looking to try and find the right position. Mystic actually tumbling into a boomerang, which is not what they want to be doing. But World Elite find themselves back towards this Baron pit. And they're committed to setting up around here. As long as Cassio has blue, their Baron threat is through the roof, especially with the uh, Leandri's torment being completed, which will burn down Baron additionally. So Snake have to react. They want to split. They don't want to just go through the mid, take this inner turret, and just punish World Elite for all their machinations around Baron. But given all the Baron damage between Vayne and Cassio, they have to respect the threat of a five to six second Baron take. Yeah, and you... It's also the same the other way around. If Snake get to set up here in the Baron Pit as well, you can get the Sand Soldiers available for himself and get them into position, and then things are very difficult for World Elite. Mystic and GA were thinking about starting off the Baron. Sideways pushing for both teams, to be honest. Bigger wave in World Elite, so probably slight advantage given that it's crashing on this inner turret on top already. But there's a wave pushing in slowly for Snake as well towards the bottom side. So no real big advantage to so World Elite getting position on Baron is all they want to do. It's the actual starting Baron's the problem. Oh, Mystic wow. takes so much damage from the Baron. Yeah, he's going to be able to heal himself up just a little bit off this Scuttle Crab, but that has to be a mistake there by World Elite. They did not want their AD carry falling to half health from just the Baron. And Snake realized this. They're heading towards the mid lane. They want to use an ultimate. You can see Beast was looking to ultimate one person. Aluka and Spirit, definitely not the targets you want. But that inner turret falls down quickly to punish World Elite for their poor weight ward clearing, to be honest. And they're getting punished for the trinkets as well. Yeah, it's happening. And G8 looking to try and pick Mystic. up that Void stuff as soon as possible. But Snake now with the control. Team fight's so awkward to fight for World Elite. They found the one perfect one where Gia was able to flash ultimate four members and basically outplay them himself. But in these other team fights, especially when Crystal has the on the hunt available, just not able to layer the CC, not getting even a pick from Aluka, slowly clearing out one ward after one ward, but they're taking about 500 health and getting 35 gold for clearing those wards. So it's not winning trades for World Elite when, so it feels the last five minutes, they haven't actually had Baron taking pressure. Yeah, and there's no wards available for either side anymore here as well. So the last ward has been placed at the back of the pit here for Snake. We'll see whether World Elite are going to head back there and try and clear that one out. No sweep is available as well, though. Everyone's sort of running out of these vision resources across the map, and finally everyone deciding to back away. Yeah, all of World Elite backing in a ward. Not going to be taken advantage of by Snake. They don't have the Baron taking pressure the World Elite have, so no real way to punish that. Looks like Dragon, I guess, will be the next point of competition. Snake can actually equalize the Dragon count at three apiece, uh, 39 minutes into this game. They, nobody's set up at all. Everyone's, of course, been paying exclusive attention to the Baron in the last four or five minutes, so Dragon is an equal opportunist at this present time. Yeah, and Blade of the Rune King now completed by Crystal. That's four items on this Sivir. We've seen what Sivir can do when she's able to pick up this many, and Sivir has had a fantastic success rate thus far, this split of the LPL. And we'll see whether Crystal can make something of it here, of course. As you mentioned, Dragon up in another 10 seconds, but Snake looking to try and put pressure around this Baron area. This is where World Elite are, and Snake more than happy to answer. Yeah, Blade of the Rune King gives a bit of self-peel. Uh, it's a bit more attack speed, and honestly, a lot of health stacking happening, even from the mid laner and Jia in this particular situation. So not a bad purchase. If you look at the other options, QSS isn't really a realistic option. You shouldn't be getting stunned by Cassiopeia, and you just respect Aluka's ranges, and you should be fine if you're Crystal with the Spell Shield. So Blade of the Rune King has that defensive utility and the lifesteal and attack speed obviously work offensively as well. Yeah, but look at this gigantic wave crashing into the inhibitor turret here on the bottom side of the map. World Elite, they're going to start off the Baron. Sand Soldier 
spots out what's going on so on the hunt much has damage. been popped but look at the baron already gets destroyed but look at that conan immediately disintegrated in that fight and crystal down very very wow. low that nah was insane from flandre gier is going to get exhausted here as well mystic still alive there on the back line does take down ella here as crystal uses his spell shield but a triple kill for you as ga is going to try and escape both of the damage dealers still somehow alive here on the side of world elite flandre not sure whether you wanted to do that but you picks it up as he heads over the wall flandre in fact manages to take kill credit and snake i don't know how they turned it around but that was beautiful use of the Gnar and the Glacial Prison. Yeah, the baiting by Flandre at the end, whether intentional or inadvertent, was just enough time to buy time for you, his new teammate, to come and pick up the kill on Gia. As you mentioned, it was just textbook stuff flashing Wonderful. into the ultimate. It was a scoop. It wasn't a wall stun, but it was exactly what the team needed. And the Gnar mechanics from Flandre, super on point. Mystic's going for a solo mission, though. The teleport coming through is spotted out. We're going to see the replay of this fight. So Mystic falls oh, low, but the scoop coming through. The alley-oop was, was a good thing for once. It wasn't a criticism. It wasn't a cataclysm, I'm helping moment. No. Wonderful play from Fandre, still alive. It's the two carries, and she has very high damage. So there was no guarantee at that precise point that Waddley wouldn't actually come back and win the fight, but Gia taken down through smart moves from Flandre, and it should be all even in the Dragons after this. Yeah, it was so cool. You just sort of throwing all of the team members of World Elite towards Flandre so that he could just use his ultimate, and that is going to be the steal from Spirit as well. Fourth Dragon picked up for World Elite, but Beast wants to try and find the ultimate, finds three members of World Elite with that one, but Flandre gets knocked out of his bounce somehow. Gia's coming. It was beautiful work. Beast takes a whole lot of his health here. Does need to back away. Beautiful Empress Divide from you. Survives that one, but he takes a lot of damage. And he's slowed down to high heaven. World Elite now want to be able to try and take a structure. Yeah, they're going to try and push through mid. There's all recalls coming through from Snake. It should be at minimum an inner turret. Crystal tried to react, but really no way you can walk through five members of World Elite. Yeah, they've got the pink ward there as well. Mystic able to lock down that inner turret there in the mid lane. Flandre now here to try and clear this one out. And Snake caught with their pants down just a little bit, and they lose the dragon here as well. It could have been 3-3, should have been 3-3, but now World Elite able to, at 48 minutes into this game, threaten the fifth dragon. A small but critical factor is that Vayne still had the Baron buff, so they had the Baron buff minions to help with the poor siege that comes through from Waddley. We've noted a couple of times yeah. that Vayne's not the best turret taker. Baron buff minions equalizes a lot of that pain that Vayne has in taking structures. Yeah, now Snake moving around as a unit once more, heading towards this top side of the map. GA, you have to think that a passive is going to be stacking up quite a horrendous amount at this stage of the game, looking to probably pick up that Rabidon's Death Cap as the next item here, and this Cassiopeia is going to be terrifying to deal with. Flandre discovering Spirit uh -oh. here, getting slowed down as well. There's the one-man ultimate, but it's to make sure that Spirit is not going to get out. Nice use of the explosive cask, and Spirit somehow still on walkabout in this one. The boulder's going to find him, though, and Snake... Are they going to be able to pick up this kill? The Rock's not going to find him either. You finds his way over the wall, and there it is. Eventually, they managed to lock down the kill in the jungle. A crystal is needed for his wave clearing, but World Elite, that jungle lasted a lot longer than he should have. And look, he couldn't punish that rotation Mystic and the rest of the team, because Mystic, as you noted before, was freezing down the bottom. So yeah. wasn't in a position to quickly run through the mid. If that was Crystal on Siva, would have been an easy rotation in the other scenario. But given that Mystic was just freezing, no way to punish the fact that they spent, what, 30 seconds trying to kill a full tank Gragas? Usually not an ideal use of resource, but in this situation, they get control over the blue side jungle of World Elite, and that should serve them in good stead two, two and a half minutes time when Baron spawns. Yeah, and I like this build coming through from Mystic as well, making sure that in an extended fight, he's going to be as healthy as possible. The double lifesteal items with the Bloodthirster and the Blade of the Ruined King. But is it going to be enough not having that Infinity Edge, not having that sort of hypercritical hit damage that he can potentially get out there. Is the Infinity Edge going to be missed in the late game build? I think if you watch back those last few team fights, you can see that Infinity Edge is a luxury too far for Mystic. Every time he tries to tumble into a fight, he eats one, one Sand Soldier auto and falls to half health. He's getting poked out point. as if it's Cassiopeia poison. Honestly, it's much the same role that Jia and you are performing these fights. There's no way for him to navigate 
the insides of a fight without taking poke damage. So you need the lifesteal, the magic resist that the build's taken. And there's just, honestly, there's no seventh slot for him to fit in an Infinity Edge. Yeah, can't really find the room for it, but... Actually, he's not going to be able to find room for a uh, Last Whisper either. I think, look, honestly, attack speed versus... Uh, Attack speed versus the last whisper on Vayne. The calculations are always pretty iffy either way. It's if you get point. more attack speed, you get those silver bolts procs. It gives you more kiting and orb walking. And honestly, those might be more desirable uh, statistics for Vayne at this particular time. Honestly, the team fights are just so difficult. That's kind of the issue that Waterloo faces. That we saw a game yesterday, and I commented that it would be a perfect Kha'Zix mid game because there was so much isolation. Yeah. Gragas needs to do a lot of work to isolate targets for Mystic and Jia to fight. Basically, they want to bounce people into Jia and Mystic. Not Beast. That ultimate's going to be a bit devastating. But wouldn't be so anybody good. else, they want to bounce in just to make it 5v4. Because in a true 5v5, Jia and Mystic try and walk in for damage. They're both short range. There's a short range mage and a short range AD carry. And they get poked out. They can't team fight on their terms. So honestly, one of the few ways the team has to do that is a true pick through the likes of Aluka or bouncing someone in. If they can bounce in anyone other than Beast next to a wall or Beast or Flandre next to a wall, they have to take the option and just try and DPS them down instantly. And now is when things are getting really hairy for World Elite, because this is a six-item Azir and a six-item Sivir. This is very, very frightening stuff because this Azir's potential DPS in a team fight is astronomical. So that's the question that's posed to World Elite is how do you fight against this comp with their two soul damage dealers? This is definitely a two-threat comp from World Elite, not being able to walk within, what, 800 units of an Azir? Yeah. They have to find a way to DPS down targets with complete respect on you, because use damage, as you mentioned, is insane. And again, leave it to Spirit. It's been the yep. way for World Elite for, what, four months of the year? Leave it to Spirit. He's the man to really engineer, or just one of these desperation fights around Baron, because the moment Baron spawns, World Elite will smash it down. Yeah, they're taking it right now as well. Flandre is teleporting in, but look huffed. at how quickly it's going down. They have, oh, the five-man ultimate from Beast here, as well as Crystal trying to get the boomerangs across. Flandre right in amongst this fight. There's the Nara and Aluka in spirit, but not exactly the members they want. You now finding his way into this one as there's the Emperor's Divide. Nice double bubble going to be used here, but Snake, they haven't found the kills they were looking for. Spirit finally does go down as the Boulder Toss gets thrown in onto GA Mystic. Wants to find an auto attack onto someone, but the double kill eventually as Aluka got singled out. And Beast, he's heading back to base here. Yu finds himself in the pit. World Elite, they've lost their two tankiest members, but Snake can't take the Baron. And the tanks on World Elite have not taken the memo and kited back with the team. Once again, Spirit's almost in a 1v5 scenario without even an ultimate to justify trying to get a single target out. Snake are going to pick up the third dragon, the movement speed equalized between the two teams. A win condition goes down. World Elite can't pick up Baron. It's an important move from Snake, but doesn't really get them closer to winning the game. Yeah, no one is close to winning this game. The gold is entirely even here at 48 minutes into this game. Five turrets apiece for both of these sides. Baron now is going to get taken here by Snake or attempted to, and there's nothing World Elite can do. Still 10, 20 seconds on both of the members of World Elite. Who can get there in time? And Vayne is trying to punish them by pushing, but honestly went for a long walk and got nothing did Mystic, as you can see on the minimap. Just going to back away now. No dragon to answer with. Snake get an answering dragon to remove the threat of the fifth dragon and the Baron. Get everything through Spirit and Aluka just going too deep. Yeah, and Flandre managed to make it up towards this bottom lane as well and using the wallet before it even reached the ground there. Very desperate to get his hands on a lot of those minions. And that stack of, minion went, uh, of minions didn't make it to the inhibitor turret like Mystic was intending it to. I just Mystic didn't contribute anything. Honestly, there was no real good decisions for him. He couldn't try and contest the Baron. He wasn't fast enough to go and push in the minions and was spotted out by multiple defensive Snake wards. Snake's warding with only a single side stone has been magnificent this game. Barring a couple of early scenarios where they didn't have maybe aggressive wards, their defensive wards in particular have been on point. Yeah, and Beast has been sitting with a stack of green wards in his back pocket this entire game as well, making sure that he's making up for the fact that he doesn't have that side stone. I think he may as well have just bought one. He'd probably uh, sort of make a little bit of money off it at this stage, but 
course, when money isn't too much of an issue here, of course, two members of Snake already with their six items. And now Spirit's got a Guardian Angel. It's a strange purchase. Honestly, just more health probably would have been more useful. During the res time, they've only got a single tank who's also been getting chipped out. So I don't see how that's actually going to buy them any advantages in a fight. It gives them the armor and magic, so it's cost-effective stats. But Snake have out-rotated World Elite and put up a defensive turret to go back to, but won't quite get the minion wave to be able to punish them with an inhibitor turret. Yeah, not quite there just yet. World Elite have managed to at least get there in time, but we've spoken about their complete lack of wave clear unless GA can get right up in the front of these minions. And you can see already this turret taking a whole lot of damage, and that was without Crystal even really getting any time with it. Who's going to actually do damage to this Siege minion? Just keeps Saplings. pumping away. They need the Azir turret to go down just so they can go for that desperation almost to engage. But given that it's up, they have to respect the potential of it being an effective turret die for them to engage. Not many good decisions here for World Elite. Yeah, there was nothing that they could do to try and get rid of that Siege minion. This next push of the creeps towards this one. He's going to be able to take that one down. Beast almost separated as the explosive cast came through, but unable to find it. Two siege minions now as the rest of this minion wave is going to get cleared out. And one more auto attack, two more, and it is going to go down there. So the inhibitor now under fire and Snake able to set up and try and take this one down. A safer option is probably to go ride the minion wave and butt and take another inner turret. Now that they don't have an Azir turret to move back to because they're just too close if they go for the inhibitor. Inhibitor's a risk, there might be a fight. No risk down oh, bottom, but wow. with that poke on Dajir. Yeah, you just doing so much work here. Flandre actually wants to find the engage here as Mystic is in range for that NAR ultimate, but Mystic able to get out of there. Beast very, very low. Aluka right in amongst this fight. Spirit gets taken down to that Guardian Angel, but he's going to be back up yet again. Does die in the end as well as you just does so much disgusting damage. Uses the Zonya's Hourglass, but now he may have sacrificed himself. GA picks up that kill, and oh, Crystal now trying to auto attack fight with the Cassiopeia and winning the double kill now. But Conan does land a very, very nice bubble. And I don't know quite what's going on this game, but Aluka and Conan, the last men standing, and Crystal and Flandre, they're backing away. And while it's an equal three for three trade, in the midst of all of this, the inhibitor is taken down. The lack of wave kill was palpable from World Elite during that long siege minion. Yeah. A uh, solo siege of the turret, you have to think. That was the only person who was safe enough to take the turret. Speaking of turrets, Crystal picks up another one. Love taps it. When you have two single target high damage threats, you pick out one of them, you take them down. Unfortunately, this is not much that Wadley can do. Mystic respected so many skill shots. QSS got a Mikhail's Crucible, still died, and then to some degree, their team fight falls apart. Yeah, well, this is the thing. And Conan coming down here, trying to clear out this minion wave, able to use his bubble to do so, trying to get some extra work done there. But you can see already, I mean, Luca. Aluka's not really going to be able to help too much. Finally, the World Elite members that can actually clear out a minion wave or two have respawned, but Spirit sort of wasted a whole lot of gold now on that Guardian Angel that he's not going to use again for the next five minutes, and he's had to sell it. Now has the Thorn Mail in his back pocket. This is a strange purchase. It was I, an I, interesting I, one. I don't see what will happen when a tank goes down for three seconds of res, comes back with 750 health. Given how these fights go, given the fact that the tank line is so critical, for these single target damage dealers to actually do damage in a fight, you need to be alive. You need to have as much health, armor, and magic resist as possible to open up the chance for Mystic and Jia to do damage. And Guardian Angel just doesn't really help in almost any of those factors, certainly not in a cost-effective way. No, it's not happening. Slow push in the top lane here for Snake, though. They do have a massive minion wave pushing up there, and it does mean that this dragon is possibly going to be under their control. They have positional advantage. World Elite looking to try and contest for it because they want the fifth dragon. That is still a point of power for this team. Spirit, wow, it's like a command attack on those Sand Soldiers and an auto attack, and Spirit's down at two-thirds health already. Well, they've done a good job of pushing out waves. They will not be punished if they can initiate a fight in the next 20 to 30 seconds. Once his mini waves start to push out, though, things will just get better and better for Snake, and it may have to be an uncontested dragon. They started it off, and with all this lifesteal, Crystal can basically solo it. Yeah, Crystal can 
put in a whole lot of work. He's actually adjusted his build almost completely. Sold the Blade of the Ruin King and his boots. Picked up Guardian Angel and... Go time! The, there it is, as Flandre. He's got the ultimate. There's another beautiful ult from Beast. Oh. Look at the five-man gnaw from Snake as Flandre's tearing this one apart. Mystic's gonna fall down. There's GA as well. All of the damage from World Elite has evaporated. And Snake, you have to think that was the game-winning team fight. That's gonna be game, and we come back. We rewind 40 minutes ago, Atlas. We said, okay, who won this early trade? Speaking of trades, Spirit's doing pretty good job against you, but look <laughs> at that range. Who won this trade? A free-farmed Vayne or a fee-farmed Beast? But Beast's ults in teamfights have been on point and setting up massive alley-oops. Over to his good friend Flandre. Wonderful four, five-man Nar in that fight. And Snake finally take it down in what is a 55-minute game. That was a massive game and so incredibly close the whole way through. You had no idea who was going to come out on top, but as soon as you line up ultimates like that, that was a perfect Glacial Prison, Emperor's Divide, and Nah, one after the other. And then you've just got uh, Crystal who says, thank you very much. I'm going to pick up all of these kills because my Ricochet will just easily hit this massive stack of enemies. And World Elite just keep picking these comps. They have so much downside. They always have lots of hyper carries, lots of yeah. damage, but they either lack wave clear or there's too late game focus or they pick a passive jungler. They can never get everything together in their first three matches to really set themselves up for success because they played so well in a lot of ways. They could just never force a massive edge, never broke the base. But you notice the moment Snake started going, breaking the base is trivial when you have the likes of Azir and Siva to push. World Elite definitely made things hard for themselves. They've been competitive in all three games, but no wins in the win call. Yeah, and I really want to see what the statistics are of Azir and Sivir as a combination because that amount of wave clear has been working out very, very well so far for a lot of these LPL teams. We've been seeing those two picks with very high priority, and it's working out so far. But ladies and gentlemen, this is only the first game between World Elite and Snake. When we return from the break, we'll see whether World Elite can answer what was a devastating last team fight from Snake.